are the Epic Entertainment Critics. I am Antoine. I'm still James. Yeah, and we uh got a nice little podcast planned for y'all today. We got a couple of, um we got some movie reviews and we got some uh trailer reactions. We got a little news, so we're gonna jump right in it. So uh the first thing we uh got on the agenda, we got a movie review. Um now we did a, a trailer reaction like I don't know when we did that reaction, dude. It was like it was like last last fall, I think. Yes, it had to be. <laughs> Where they um there, it's a Full Metal Alchemist. Now it's a. There used to be an anime. So, uh, Full Metal Alchemist was um was an anime that uh, actually was a manga first. Right. And I think a, so. They started one manga adaptation, one anime adaptation. Yeah. Way, way back in the day. What? What that? You talking about the one that came out two thousand three? Yeah. But see, that wasn't anime. Right. That was more original like, though. Wasn't that original? A lot of that was more was original stuff. Okay. Yeah. And then <clears> uh, in 08, they came out with Brotherhood, which right. was verbatim. Well, it was we are straight from the yeah. the manga. When did that manga come out? You know. Ah, uh, I do not. Yeah. I want to say ninety nine, but okay. So it went too long after the manga came out when they came out with that yeah. original uh, series. All right, yeah. So Full Metal Alchemist, and it got real popular like on Adult Swim. I remember when I first saw it, I went too. I didn't know what too much to make of it. Like I, I watched a little bit of it, and I was like, "This is kind of weird. I don't know." But as I start watching, I start getting into it, which mostly anime is is the way they the way they do anime and, and manga. It the story works for the long haul. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, there's there's not a lot of like uh, instant gratification in that. Story. Yeah, but it, it always keep you engaged. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it was one of those stories, and then I really got into it, and I like I had to see the the whole thing, and it was a damn good damn good series. And not finding out later that uh, when they had came out with Brotherhood, I'm like, are they bringing it out again? What they bringing out again? That it was a a lot of differences there. Yeah. You know, when they um uh dropped this other series, I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay, it's worth it was worth watching the whole thing over again because there's there's a lot of stuff they changed or whatever. Like, there was a lot because <laughs> the uh, O3 anime left me with like by the end left me with a lot of questions. Yeah, like, wait, yeah, where did so where this where they come from? How did this end up here? Like, right, it it was one of them. It's one of them animes that make you ask a lot of questions. Yeah. It ain't no, it's not simple. No, and when we talk about this plot. I'm not sure if I can even explain it like, all the way. <laughs> like there's at least three conspiracies of epic proportions all going on at the same time. Yeah. So, okay. Um this is the live action version. And uh Warner Brothers have actually been funding these live action anime movies because they actually gonna make a bleach one. And yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I, don't, I wish they give them a little more money on the budget since it's Warner Brothers, but you know they don't believe in right. Nothing else but uh, like, in, and especially <laughs> like some like this Full Metal Alchemist or Bleach, which which are you know bound to be effects heavy, mm -hmm. could use the budget. Yeah, I know, I know. So, but um, I guess Warner Brothers just taking a little portion of their studios and they using it to make some of these so anime movies, change. right? And and they all uh, Asian is uh, Asian stars indies. So I guess it's like an Asian division of Warner Brothers, maybe. I'm not sure how they got it. Yeah, it, but, I mean, it's probably, you know, Warner Brothers Tokyo or whatever. Yeah, something. And they getting, uh, they probably buying up some rights to some animes and, like, and, I, but, like I said, I really wish they have just a little more confidence to give them more on their budgets. Yeah. Because looking at these, they actually pretty competently made, but you can tell they got budget constraints. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's disappointing, like, because... And this isn't to say that any of these are bad because they don't have have the money. It's just you can see where they could have used more. Exactly. Where I, I see the talent and I see if they have more money, they can make this a lot better. But I can tell they ain't got it. So we're going to get to the uh, to the uh, movie. Now, this was released on Netflix. And um, and so uh, uh, it, it was released maybe a week ago. And so this, this movie is about... Um, where should I start? <laughs> okay, the Full Metal Alchemist is about now. This is a fictional, a fictional country. It's kind of like a, a fictional timeline, but it's, it takes a lot of cues from real 
yeah. times in history. So like their country, uh, Amestris is more or less Germany. Right. So this is kind of like uh, Germany in another uh, another universe, maybe, I guess you want to say. Yeah. And so um, it's about two boys that um, they're not to use alchemy. Alchemy is... Um, it's uh, <laughs> a form of science that deals with transmuting uh, matter into different forms and states. Uh, it happens to, in this world look a lot like magic. But. Right. So in this universe, technology isn't as advanced as they could because they use alchemy. Instead of, you know what I'm saying, instead of basing it on more technology. And alchemy is kind of, it's, it's not magic. It's like it's especially stated to be science. Okay, well it's it's science, but they didn't know. Um, it looks a, it's a, it looks a, a hell of a lot like magic. But but you can get fooled because people thought uh, when, with technology back in the eighteen yeah. whenever nineteenth century whatever people were using magic when they was using science. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so it's it's science, but it's something that is not used. I don't know if, if any of that is possible or whatever. But it's supposed to be some kind of science of changing matter, right? Yeah. So, okay, these two boys, they they good at using this um this um alchemy. And that's kind of where it starts. Um and the main plot is basically they they their mother die and they try to use alchemy to bring her back to life. And spoiler alert, it goes wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's where uh, you kind of get the, the title full metal alchemist because they um, they lost some body parts and they had to replace it with uh, metal body parts using alchemy, or no? Because well, uh, it's they have actually how they got technology to use auto mill. <laughs> so that's that's the one, let's play auto mill. So that's one thing that's always bugged me about. That. <laughs> so they so this world it does have cars and trains and that's about right. it. It's but it seemed like close. It's maybe like the. Maybe the 1930s or like something. This, like this is basically the industrial revolution era. Yeah, kind of stuff. and yet somehow they've got <laughs> like me mechanized prosthetics that interface directly with your nervous system. It was out there. Like, and like it ain't nothing. Like it like so you can get they can they can build you a a a, um, a metal arm and it and works like just like your regular arm. Like, and I, I would even give them this if, like, some... And without using alchemy. That's just their own medical. alchemy. Like, if this was some government alchemist think tank came up with these, fine. No, nah, there's auto mechanics in, like, hick towns that can do this. Yeah, I know. That's what it made it look like. The people that put that use this technology are just, like, old mechanics and shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, and they do it like it ain't shit. So, uh, like we said, it was... Um, the the boys they they lost their mother. They try to use alchemy to bring them back, and it and they went bad. And um, this brings the movie where one of the one of the boys lost a body, mm -hmm. and he uh, used alchemy to put his soul to, to a, a suit, suit of armor. to a suit of armor. And I mean, if you believe in all that stuff, that's kind of like you know, it's, it's like you know what I'm saying. It's kind of yeah. like. You say it's science, but then you say souls, and he's like, "Okay, yeah. what are you talking about here?" It's like, you, it's like you literally helped your brother possess a suit of armor, and yeah. then you told me you you practice science. Not this magic. show go it asks a lot of questions about the afterlife and and and, and souls, and, and you know what I'm saying, soul and all that. Yeah, it's it's it's, a, it's it get kind of deep. So to, to to keep from getting into all that, <laughs> we're gonna talk about uh, you know some of the main plots. So he used he used alchemy. We haven't to, even said <clears> the names yet, have we? Uh yeah okay we'll get to it. Yeah. Uh he used his um his alchemy to put his brother's <clears throat> soul in a suit of armor because he lost his body when right. they was trying to bring back um their mom. And uh, I think he lost his leg. He lost his leg and his arm. He lost his leg when he, they tried to bring their mother back and his arm he put brought his brother's soul back. Right, and that's where he got the uh, metal prosthetics. So um the main character name is uh Edward Elric. And his little brother that's in the suit of armor is named Alphonse Elric. <laughs> so, and and then the whole uh, movie, I mean, the whole basically they, they uh, mission is to get their his brother's body back. Mm. So they trying to find out anything they can about alchemy and and whatever to um, to get his body back. And they trying to get something called the Philosopher's Stone. And a lot of people have heard of that term in different 
way different kind of media. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So in the, in this world, the philosopher stone, which is <clears throat> something they're not even sure exists, is something that they can use to bring back his body because uh, equivalent is change is their whole tagline. Yeah. So only way you can use alchemy, you only way you can get something if you give up something. Right. And they trying to find out, only, and the only thing that can get something without giving up something is the philosopher stone. Yeah. So they trying to find out how to make a philosopher stone or find a philosopher stone so they can get his body back without giving up nothing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So that's your whole movie, but in in during in, in this movie they keep you know they run into uh, a lot of trouble because it's like baddies out there that wants the philosopher's stone. Like there's, there's no like they're pretty much the only decent people involved with the philosopher's stone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and this brings uh, some of the other characters. We can talk about the other characters because in this world it's like a military, and um, and this uh, the. Um, the show got a lot to do with military involvement in things. And, um, <clears throat> I, well, I don't want to say, okay. Well, I didn't want to say, well, uh, how the military are actually doing this, that, and the other because that's kind of like a right. straight up. We won't go into all that. Right. So, uh, but we. It is a military <clears throat> state. You know, the military runs the country, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, mm -hmm. like, I think, uh, all, pretty much all, almost all alchemists to actually further their craft have to be certified by the military. <laughs> Right, so state alchemists are people that um, basically work for the military that um, use the alchemy and military. And it's like any like any society, governments they're gonna exploit when you got special skills. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So they exploit this. Government want to exploit this, and a lot of these alchemists are just like scientists, and they just want to see their work. You know, come out or whatever. And like but the government, five of them, like, are actually frontline soldiers. Yeah, and the uh, government, because because the government used they alchemy to uh, for military purposes for yeah, for like, weapons. They weaponized they alchemy where it could have been something that they, they could have used it for better things. But yeah, it's like, hey, I like how you use alchemy to make statues. Have you ever thought of making something that can kill people? So, uh, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> but yeah, um, all all the characters are really close to the anime, and I'm. Kudos to to the creators for making, you know, uh, for doing their homework and don't just make them look like the characters, make them act like the characters. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, cause usually it's a <laughs> toss up. You know, which one? Yeah. Which one do you want more? You know? And don't let me get started with you know when you when you take an anime and, and you and send it to Hollywood, mm. just forget it. <laughs> Hollywood leave anime <clears throat> alone. Anyways, so we got uh and then we got all your humunculus, which uh. I haven't said what those are. <laughs> so, Hemunculi are basically... Art but, ho but hold on, before you tell what they are, what was their reasons for their being there? Like, So basically, it's um, it's another group of people that's actually... Um, that has their own agenda that's um, kind of, I guess you would say, watching Ed and Al because they, they want what they want. They want they're, to they're get close to the... Yeah. It's other people trying to get to the philosopher's stone too yeah. and they feel like Ed and, and Al are the best chance they can that they can use to get to her, to, to it and these people um, uh, have uh, they have like people uh, I would say enforcers or henchmen or somebody that's the, in they in they group operators right and they are the homunculus now you can say what the homunculus uh, are the homunculi <laughs> are basically artificial humans uh, that were created through alchemy yeah uh, <clears> they <throat> had Te I guess t technically they have no souls. Yeah, um, and they all have like real. So like they all heal. Like you can kill them as many times as you want, and they'll just heal right back up because they use alchemy to bring them to alive or whatever. Right. And, and this so like I guess because of whatever type of alchemy they use, like their bodies always reset. And this is part of the alchemy that's taboo, yeah. where. They human, say uh, transmutation, right? Where they were, we're basically in this in this fictional universe, you can do things with alchemy with living people and 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 dead people, but they say, you know what? It's too dangerous. The results always too bad. Just it's just taboo. Do not do nothing with with a lot with living things with alchemy, unless your government. Well, and the government been experimenting with animals and 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 yeah. stuff to to try to learn how to do alchemy with living things. And that brings uh, another character, Shal Tucker, uh, which I guess he's, I guess he's one of the main villains in this or whatever. Yeah. Which he works for, also works for the government, and 
and the government, uh, as they do everybody, using him to get what they want, but it turns out to be a big little mess there. Yeah. Uh, so what you think about Shao Tucker? Uh, they, I, I don't, I didn't think he had quite the right look, but man, yeah. if he wasn't creepy enough. <laughs> Like I've seen that dude in a couple of other movies, and mm-hmm. creepiness is a is, is a talent. Yeah, this. well, the whole character of Shao Tucker is probably one of those, basically a mad scientist. Yeah, um, that's probably been pushed, you know, pushed too far in in certain ways, and then he just kind of went mad or whatever because like, he's <laughs> he's so obsessed and focused on this goal, like everything else is. Second, third, and fourth. You know. Yeah. So, um, as one of the, he, he's um, one of the antagonists in this story, and also you got uh, Winry was a friend of uh, Ed and Al. Mm. Uh, I think I think they did her okay. Yeah. Uh, I, but I'm figuring like, how good can you do her? Yeah. She's always it's always one of those annoying characters in anime that <laughs> I just. And Winry is one of them. Like, it, it was just a constant, like, why are you still here? Yeah, they always the one that to uh, tell that the, the the main protagonist that they doing something wrong yeah. or they just always there and they always put themselves in danger yeah. and they always make the protagonist's life more difficult. Yeah. Um, and Winry is basically a childhood friend of Ed and Al, and she. Uh, actually fixed his auto mail. I will say, I don't believe he's ever actually paid her for repairing his auto mail. Yeah, but the whole point is she pops up when she's not needed and she always end up getting in danger. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? That's just one of those characters that is very annoying, but they always put them in there in in anime or whatever. So, uh, stepping back real quick on the homunculus, how how do you feel about the way they casted them? Okay, so yeah, the the homunculus... um, it's a uh, normally it's seven of them, but they only put three in the movie, so I'm thinking they're gonna break them up. Yeah. Because other humunculized did not show up until later on in the series, so they got three of them, which is and they all named after the uh, seven deadly sins, which is a nice touch. So we got lust, gluttony, and envy. Yeah. That's here, and it's um um uh, some more that's not there yet. So the ones on this one, uh, I'm gonna say the lust was real good. Mm. Um. Envy actually was pretty good considering how Envy was. Envy's kind of like a look like a she male. It's like, is that a girl or a dude? You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the one thing. Like every, I kept hearing, it's like, man, who's this Envy chick? I'm like, that's a dude, bro. Well, well that's how I, I remember in the, the original. I thought it was a chick at first, and then when she started talking, the, I'm the like, vo- oh. the voice, was, <laughs> like had the voice of a really like pissy old woman. Yeah. <laughs> but um, now Gluttony. The way they did Gluttony is okay. I mean, best you can do. I think they did pretty good. They got they had a fat guy. He he had an obviously fat suit on. Yeah. But I mean, really, he did look like the character. So I mean, he looks kind of silly. But what you want? So like, <laughs> even with their art style, Gluttony was always kind of cartoonish in comparison. Right. I mean. Uh, it was just an obvious fat suit. Yeah. I mean, they could found a fat guy, but they found a big guy, but he ain't as big as they needed as they needed right. for Gluttony. But I think they did all right. And when they did, when they opened his mouth, like the yeah. way they didn't show it at first, they showed just a shadow, and I thought that was that the was, right that move. Was perfect. That was the perfect. right move. And uh, they got a little ambition to try to show it later, but and, <laughs> I mean, like props for like. You know, going there, but mm-hmm. they could have left it as a shadow because it's so much creepier and terrifying. Why? Right. Sometimes it's better what you don't show yeah. than what you show. You don't always have to show it, especially like if, when it's, if you know it, your brain fills in those the the, the, yeah. the image, and if you don't, you're you're equally terrified because you have no idea. What's sometimes, going on. if you see if it's happening off camera or you just hearing it, seeing a shadow, or whatever, you can start filling the blanks like you said, filling the blanks yourself and be like. What the hell would do that? You know, just right. see the aftermath of what what they did. You know, right. make you start wondering. God damn, it's got to be. You know, <laughs> so uh, I think they did the Hemoglobin pretty good, man. They, I mean, I will say I thought Envy was a little quiet mm. in comparison to the way he he is uh, he he was in uh, in the show. Yeah, he'd be talking more shit, or maybe. Yeah, yeah. but uh, they they definitely let Lust take center stage on this one, right? So, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So. Um, on the whole, the series was a. Uh, it's actually, I mean, uh, I mean, the movie. It actually was a pretty good adaptation of the uh, of the anime because 
it was very noticeable um, that they had a, a low budget. Mm-hmm. And that kind of brings some of my pro- my problems with this was uh, they got a little ambitious when they tried to do some CGI at the beginning. Yeah. And it's <laughs> so uh, this is uh, when, uh, when you know, Edward and Al on these little missions, they end up uh, running to people that they trying to take out. And so they did the dude did some alchemy to make these little stone, these little stone creatures come at them, and that just looks so bad. <laughs> like I'm like it, it looked like some sci-fi Saturday morning sci-fi. It reminds me of the, the uh, that old Final, Final Fantasy movie. Yeah, like it was on that level. It was some cheap CGI. It was like that cheap CGI that you can probably do on your computer. Like yeah. you could probably just do it on, on on your laptop. Like you could get you a little program and do that CGI on your laptop. Yeah. <laughs> and put on and make you a fan film. So um, I think they didn't need that. No, you know, I think because they know that that stuff is there, they really wanted to get as much of that in as possible. Yeah, the but, good part is they didn't do that much of that. Yeah, you know, they had like that one sprawling alchemy battle at the beginning. Yeah, um, right, and and then they had uh, uh, some stuff at the end, but. I was just that's why I was I was thinking that man you can do some of this stuff with just just some good fight scenes you don't have to you know have CGI monsters right. you know come off the ground and shit you know what I'm saying like, that was actually one of the things like l- later on in the series that they got really good at in the show was rather than having all these like people putting you know clapping and putting their hands on the ground and then stuff happens and, uh-huh. They're basically throwing rocks at each other is what it really amounts to. Yeah. So like, you, you end up, especially with the homunculi, with these great, like, fight scenes. Right, right. Because they got special abilities, all the homunculi. They all got, like, uh, certain things about them that they can do. Envy can turn into uh, anybody. Yeah. And uh, probably super strong, I guess. Yeah. And then Lust basically, I guess, got her fingertips turned into knives. I think what was it they called her ability in the uh, manga? Uh, the ultimate lance, like I guess uh, supposedly <laughs> she can pierce anything. Yeah, and um, and gluttony basically can eat anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, they all got abilities or whatever. I, I just had an idea for a new TV show: gluttony versus food. Just, like just man versus food with gluttony. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, I'll watch it. At least an episode. <laughs> so they missing uh well they it was it was a couple characters that was in the sh- in the anime that didn't make it to this movie, and I'm thinking if they make another movie they should be in these um uh, in this and that's like and these are some of my favorite characters. So like, we had some one monkeys that had greed, greed man, and uh, they had uh, Fira Bradley, which I guess well I ain't gonna say he was Hitler, but I'm saying he's supposed to be in the Fira of. I mean he had the same. Uh, Position that Hitler had, yeah, but which he wasn't Hitler, right? I know. Uh, so it, it, it was a couple more. Uh, <clears throat> there was a uh, sloth, uh, Armstrong. Man, <laughs> I was so disappointed not to see my boy Armstrong. Like I just, I wanted that that intro moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it it was some it was some more characters they have that they ain't even used, but then they're gonna use. So I think uh, a part two would be nice. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm really hoping they manage, like, because, of course, this usually, like, depends on how well-received any any movie is, but mm. I feel like this warrants some, a sequel or two. Yeah, um, so we can wrap this on up, man, give us our give our rating. Uh, so, on the whole, this movie, uh, I'm going to say this movie was actually, it was entertaining. Uh, it it lose a little points for the CGI, but because of... Uh, because of the budget that I noticed uh, that they didn't have this budget. Uh, and I, I just think um, because of them getting the characters right, and that's more important than than getting good special effects in there. Yep. And I'm going to give that more points than I'm going to take away points. <laughs> so because of them getting the characters right and the acting, I am going to give this a solid dope. It, 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 you know what I'm saying? It didn't, it didn't get epic because it's... It, if it if it's gonna be epic, it's gotta really blow me away. Right, right. But the um, but like I said, uh, getting these animes, uh, making these live action animes, um, getting the characters, character, getting the characters right, is good enough for me. Just 
um, making them look like they uh, look like they look and act like they act and get the mannerisms on point, then I'm cool with that. Uh, so for that, I'll give it a dope. You know, for me, like that that's always been like this the 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 narrative and the characters has always been the important thing to me so like i can i can you know give him a pass on on the uh you know uh the visuals and everything but like they, the characters are on point you know the storyline it's not exact but it's they kept the tone as much as they could while trying to bridge it into into a you know a what two a little over two hours uh, actually it was, i think it was like an hour and 48 minutes uh, or something it? like Something uh, but, like that, but you know, like you take an you know you take a a show that lasted ye- a couple years and draw it down to a into an hour and some and change, you're gonna drop some stuff out. So like I'm not mad about that. And this to me is like this is one of those movies I point out whenever folks say, "What was wrong with Ghost in the Shell?" It wasn't this. <laughs> It wasn't this. Now, that's a movie where the visuals was good, but the story was shit. The story and the characters (laughs) were shit. Like, the the only characters that I thought they got right on that were uh, uh, Bato and Aramaki. Yeah. Yeah, that was all right. Yeah. But anyways, we we, we ain't supposed to talk about that piece of shit no more. (laughs) Um, But yeah, like, this is is more or less how you do an anime, a live-action anime adaptation here. So I got to give them a solid dope. All right, yeah, um, <clears throat> it was good. I want to see some more animes being made, and I'm I'm cool with if they just like make some animes that ain't it don't have to take a lot of special effects and all that. Just you know, uh, just follow a good narrative, a live action narrative. Now they got Bleach coming up. That might take some special effects, but we'll see. <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't mind seeing like uh, uh, like to take it a little old school, like uh. Baki or uh, Shadow Skill. Oh, man, come on. Hell yeah, dude. They do a Baki, a grappler Baki, or they try to do, I was about to say, uh, um, Fist of North Star. Uh, that didn't turn out so uh, well. <laughs> like, uh, and, and I doubt it's ever going to happen, but I'd love to see like a live action Shadow Skill. Yeah, that'd be nice too. You know, but like some something like that isn't terribly effects heavy. Mm-hmm. Because then that that frees you it frees up a lot of that special effects budget. I know. I mean, they can do some sports animes because I love uh, Hajime no Epo. I, I wouldn't say no <clears throat> to uh, Kuroko live action. What is that? Uh, it's a basketball. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, sky's the limit, man. Y'all just gotta pull the trigger. Yeah. All right. So that's our uh, review for the Full Metal Alchemist. Pretty good. Check it out. It's on Netflix right now. So we're going to move on. We got a couple other things to do.